We recently covered the enigmatic ancient civilization that could once be found among the tops of the mountains within northern Peru. Known as the Chachapoyas, or Cloud People, they were a race of possible ancient giants that are said to have been responsible for some of the most precariously positioned and most amazingly constructed ancient builds to be found anywhere on Earth, let alone Peru. And the most astonishing of these has to be the ancient site known as Kulap. Kulap is a little academically shared, thus little known ancient Peruvian site, located within the Peruvian mountains near the towns of Maria and Tingo, in the southern part of the region of Amazonas. According to particularly funded parties, it was built by the Chachapoyas culture a mere 1400 years ago on a ridge overlooking the Utcubamba Valley. However, once one has an opportunity to visually explore this untouched, once lost ruin, the unexplainable extent of the groundwork that went into creating the site becomes apparent. What first appears to be long brick-walled fortifications are soon realized to actually be enormous, seemingly unimaginably huge groundworks built by brick creating multi-meter reinforced walls, backfilled and leveled with earth, creating a ruin which is now what can only be seen as man-made geology. Groundworks the size of no other anywhere on earth, created apparently quite recently within history without any real record of the astonishing event, or more importantly, cataloging of the methods used found anywhere among the sites. The city has three entrances, two to the east and the other one to the west. The main entrance has a trapezoid shape, having once also having a corbel arch. This entrance was siege-proof due to its cunning shape. It becomes narrower and narrower until it allows the passage of only one person at a time. Astonishing architecture, built with precision into enormous constructions. There are over 550 structures within the fort nearly all of which having once been circular. On the southwestern part of the settlement, there is a 5.5 meters high structure known as El Tentiro, or Templo Mayor, Spanish for main temple. Ceremonial archaeological remains have been found at this location, and it is hypothesized that the building may have been used as a solar observatory. Kulap was accidentally rediscovered in 1843, by Juan Crisostomo Nieto, a judge from the city of Chachapoyas. In 1870, Antonio Reamonde made the first known survey of the site. Ever since, details regarding the site have slowly been revealed. Astonishing ruins. A place like many others around the globe, which also display seemingly impossible feats of engineering accompanied by complete lack of any recording or explanation for said tasks, undoubtedly predates its academic dating. The question is, who could have built such astonishing architecture atop the largest groundworks anywhere on Earth? How did they complete such a mammoth task at such a high altitude? Perhaps one day we will find out. Tambo Machai is an ancient site located within Peru that, like so many others within this remarkable landscape, clearly demonstrates a level of sophistication within its stonework unquestionably far out of the reaches of those who are academically claimed to have been the builders of these remarkable sites. It is a site that not only possesses the same mind-boggling methods of polygonal masonry, as that of Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman, among many others, but also exhibits an excellent example of the levels of refinement that also went into the building of the irrigation systems throughout the area. Systems that, although unimaginably old, still function perfectly to this day. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguing regarding this area, even eclipsing these astonishing feats of ancient engineering, is an area in particular which exhibits some of the most perplexing peculiar feature to be found anywhere in ancient Peru. This area of stone is not merely vitrified, but was, at some point within the distant past, turned to lava. With the limited investigations available, 
predictably none of which undertaken by funded academics, it has been revealed that this mysterious event did not occur as one would have presumed from a heating from above, but from beneath, or perhaps from within the center of the stonework, successfully melting the stone wall in its entirety into a pool of liquid magma. And although largely overlooked by tourists, and indeed academics alike, the evidence of the stone having once turned to liquid is undeniable. The question then, what turned this stone to liquid? Was it some form of weapon? Or perhaps, is this evidence to suggest how polygonal walls were once built? Perhaps these as yet unexplained polygonal walls were constructed with such precision due to a past ability of its builders, able to melt and shape these stones prior to placement. Or perhaps, could this melted stone be evidence of a war? One that occurred between the inhabitants of these ancient ruins and an unknown entity, ultimately resulting in their demise. Perhaps being the reason why these highly advanced, highly capable ancient people from these civilizations not only mysteriously disappeared, but left many a quarry amid ancient stonework seemingly abandoned, left where we find them today. In another area of the world, far away from Peru, there also exists compelling evidence of such a war, having actually once taken place with a possible entity from above. Eerily, this site is claimed as the remnants of a battle with God, specifically surrounding the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sulfur balls embedded among the landscape at this specific site is undoubtedly compelling evidence to support these accounts of war, a holy war undertaken at this specific location that, regardless of holy scripture, was fought with a foe of considerable ability. Exclusively found at these sites are white, pure sulfur balls embedded in the mortar that now, due to their tremendous age, are slowly turning to powder. The sulfur found at these sites has also, intriguingly, been tested from 93% to as high as 98% pure sulfur, with trace metals such as magnesium found within that would have produced astounding heat, easily capable of melting stainless steel and indeed the stones within Peru. Furthermore, the brimstone found is significantly different to sulfur found elsewhere, almost as if this brimstone was specifically designed. For example, sulfur from within natural geothermal regions is yellow in crystal form. We find all these evidential factors highly compelling. Chachapoyas is an ancient city once effortlessly mingled among the mountains of northern Peru. At an elevation of 2,335 meters, it is still an inhabited location that was once the home of a little-known or indeed understood enigmatic civilization known as the Cloud People. Situated in the mountains far from the Peruvian coast, although this didn't apparently stop them somehow creating elaborate jewelry from seashells, Chachapoyas remains extremely isolated to this day. Only ever accessed by enthusiastic hikers, adventurers, and airlifted scientists, it is a site like many others we have covered which dot our planet, that, through our own research, has been revealed to have a contradictory explanation for their construction. Indeed, these sites are dated too, and subsequently tagged to convenient culprits. We have not only found compelling evidence to suggest that this most isolated, once thriving location is one of the oldest pre-Incan relics anywhere in Peru, but that the datings of such sites is often a funded conspiracy rather than a reality. Los Pinchudos is an elaborate Chachapoya tomb complex molded into a high rock face. It is a natural and cultural World Heritage Site and is guarded 365 days of the year and closed off to all except specific scientific exploration. What is remarkable about the site is the fact that the wooden statues marking the tombs have mysteriously survived the ages. These statues were used by academia to date the site. However, 
although the explanation for the statue's survival is apparently, quote, an arid climate, end quote, the actual site displays evidence of a far greater antiquity than these timber ghosts. Wooden artifacts rarely survive the humidity found within the Peruvian mountains, and although scientists attribute the figure's preservation to the site's location in an arid climate, the site, when discovered, was in such disrepair, an emergency conservation effort was launched to save it from further erosion. Many believe that the tombs would have been lost completely without church and Peruvian conservador Ricardo Morales Gamara, who restored the eroding foundations. The clay and stone tombs of the complex also have wooden roofs and have surviving Inca paint in red, yellow, black, and white. We feel, due to the other compelling evidence that has been gathered and subsequently shared upon our channel, along with the extensive erosion found at many of the sites attributed to the Chachapoyas, that there may be a high chance that the wooden roofing and statues commemorating the graves may have been another conservation effort, performed by people placed more recently within history. People modern academia claim as the original builders. Is it possible that with the extensive erosion evident at the site, in contrast to the highly preserved and seemingly recent wooden monuments and protective roofing, that we are actually looking at more than two building phases upon these tombs? An original construction, followed by a later Incan conservation effort, and then a modern correction? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.